mic moving up and down. All right, we're we are live. We are live again. Hello, all right. welcome, salutations, greetings, all those good things. Um, everything okay, Jared? All right, we're back again. Um, so what did we look at last week uh, in the book of Joshua? Uh, yes, for Larry. Yes, yes. Mr. Donna. Yep. Uh, we talked about the um, specifically God's plan, but a plan. You, when we when we when we're going to battle and we're going to do do work for the Lord, we need a an idea of what we're going to be doing. We need a plan for what we're going to be doing. We don't need to just to uh, gallivant around out there. I think that's more often times than not what leads to our ultimate discouragement. And getting stuff done is because if you don't have any plan to start with, and then you start in on something and you get discouraged with that, then you're very quickly because you you didn't really have any kind of goal set. <laughs> you you're you're done before you get going. Um, anybody else? right yeah uh after the battle of ai uh they built an altar out of uncut unhewn stones and they wrote it said it wrote the the law on there which it, the law is technically the five books of moses but based on the number of stones and stuff they had probably joshua carved the ten commandments into them and then he did end up reading the entire law um cover to cover um and they spent several several hours out uh doing that reaffirming the the reason why they were doing this really yeah anybody else just John Yep, that after after the completion of the plan, they rested. We talked about the rest of uh, God is the creator of rest. God wants us to rest, and I, I let's not take that too far. God doesn't want us to be lazy, but he do, he does want us to rest. Uh, to 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 rest means that you must have been doing something before that. Um, uh, resting from your rest is not a thing, uh, <laughs> uh, as much as we'd like it to be. Uh, so, uh, that brings us to Joshua chapter 9. Joshua chapter 9, we go from the battlefield to the, I almost probably would say one of the few times that it kind of gets into a political arena for Joshua. Um, and so we'll start at the beginning of Joshua chapter 9. It came to pass when all the kings that were on this side, Jordan, in the hills and in the valleys and in the coast of the great sea over against Lebanon, the Hittite, the Amorite, and the Amorite, the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Hivite, and the Jebusite heard thereof. They gathered themselves together to fight with Joshua and with Israel with one accord. And the inhabitants of Gibeon heard that what Joshua had done unto Jericho and to Ai. They did work wily and went at and made as if they had been ambassadors, and they took old sacks upon their asses, and, and wine bottles, uh, and wine bottles, old and rent, and bound up, and old shoes, and and clouded. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, um. Uh, and clouded upon uh, and old shoes, and clouded upon their feet, and, and old garments upon them, and all the bread of their provision was dry and moldy. So, um, basically, 
Joshua crosses the river. Joshua takes Jericho. Joshua takes Ai. Everybody else from to the west side of Jordan, of the Jordan River, begin amassing themselves together to fight. Um, it's, it, it lists various Canaanite, and I use, I know it has, I think it has the Canaanites listed there, but Canaanite in the generic term, people that lived in Canaan. Um, various Canaanite peoples all gathered themselves together to fight. But the people of Gibeon heard what happened to Ai. Um, and they decided they were going to try to uh, pull a trick. And their idea was to clothe themselves as if they had traveled a very, very long way. They, um, they put on old, old uh, uh, clothing, they put on old shoes, and uh, they put it on clothes that had been, they said, clouded up, it was like patched and, and, and dirty garment. And they put on, um, and they had uh, old sacks and wine bottles that were old and dried up and, and not worth it. And in the pretense that they had been traveling a long way. And they went unto Josh, and they went to Joshua under the camp at Gilgal and said unto him and the men of Israel, We come from a far country, therefore make a league with us. Now, I said this is their first step into the into politics because this is the first time that we have been on this campaign with Joshua where he is approached not from a on the battlefield, but in the the courtroom, if you will, from in, in, at, at, approached as a leader instead of as a warrior. Uh, and their their idea was to make a league, was to 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 join up together. And the men of Israel said unto the Hivites, Peradventure you dwell among us, how shall we make a league with you? And they said unto Joshua, We are thy servants. And Joshua said unto them, Who are ye, and whence come ye? Now, they Joshua's asking the right questions. Who are you, and where are you from? And they said unto him, From a far country thy servants are... And from a far country thy servants have come uh, because of the name of the Lord thy God, for we have heard the fame of him and all that he did in Egypt. And all that he did to the two kings of the Amorites that were beyond Jordan, to Sihon king of Heshbon and to Og king of Bashan, which was, uh, which was at Ashtaroth. Wherefore our elders and all the inhabitants of our country spake us, saying, Take vic victuals with you for the journey, and go and meet them, and say unto them, We are your servants, therefore... Now make a league with us. Now, this appears, and, and, and I, I, the Bible is very clear that they are being deceptive right out from the start, but it, taking, not taking into account the fact that the Bible literally says they were being wily, that they were, that they were, being, that they were being intentionally deceptive, you, you, if you pull those verses and, and take everything in the context as which they're presented, this is a very, very friendly and um, uh, even flattering um, proposal. Basically, their thing was, we've seen how hard that you have smacked everybody that you've come across. We don't want to get involved with that. And so our elders told us, you need to go make a league with those people. We, even if we have to be their slaves, if, they, if we even have to be their servants, it's better than being destroyed. And we're coming from far country, by the way. Did I mention that we were coming from way off? Now... When we, we've been talking about our spiritual warfare in this class. Now, when we go to battle, when we go to fight, when we go and even take God's plan with us, when we go in the power of the Lord, the opportunity for a compromise will present itself. These people came not so much as wolves in sheep's clothing because honestly they didn't want to do the Israelites any ill will. They literally, they wanted to make a league with them but they knew what the principle was. The principle was that every, all the Canaanite cities died. Now it keeps pointing out that it says that we, they heard what they did to Ai. They heard what they did to Jericho. What was it that was scaring them? Does anybody know? Specifically. Total destruction. The only thing that survived of Ai were the possessions. But every man, woman, and child in these cities was destroyed. Fear 
is driving them to try to make this bargain. The devil is a very, very powerful being. But make no mistake, when you enter the battlefield with the power of God on your side, you're a fearful thing. You are a, you are a, um, a vessel of God's power. You are, a, you are an avatar, if you will, of God's, of God's righteous arm. Of God's, uh, uh, of God's uh, uh, ability, of of his, of his, of his, uh, of his, of his power to smite demons, and I mean, we, we, you can look in the New Testament, and when Jesus approached demons, they were oftentimes terrified that he was around them, because whether, and I think we don't generally, whether we we choose to recognize it or not, the the power of God is a fearful thing. And the, peop the people of Ai knew that fear. Now, we're going to be approached on this battlefield all kind of with anything, with, with people presenting themselves as friends. People presenting themselves as people um, that just want to help out, just want to get involved. And, and, and I would... We've been approached by, by by people like this, and oftentimes it comes in the guise of, well, and and I, I before I managed to change the email, I would get emails constantly for our pastor saying that all the pastors in the area are going to get together and and just and, and and have a breakfast, or all the pastors in the area are going to get together and discuss X number of topics, or or have a little or have a little round table. And in my mind, this is the league. This is the people of Gibeon coming out and, and in in the guise, and I know that they were they had their guise was trying to convey something different. But in the guise of we're your friends, we're not a threat to you. We're not anything that you should be worried about. You should compromise your stances because we're coming to you in this fashion. That you should let down your guard. And do something that God had specifically said not to do because we're coming to you as a friend. And I believe Joshua was immediately affronted by this because, like I said, Joshua was asking the right questions. Who are you and where did you come from? <laughs> uh, and, and the Bible talks a lot about watching. Uh, when... Jesus left his disciples in the in, in the Garden of Gethsemane. What was what was his commandment to them to watch to make sure that nothing was going on? Jesus had I, I think one of the reasons he had it because Jesus had a very very uh, specific con uh, conversation that he needed to have with the Lord God about the cup that he was fixing to have to take. Uh, but we're supposed to watch, and Joshua was watching. Joshua was like, "Hey, red flags are flying up here, but not enough of them were." Joshua, Joshua wasn't wasn't, and and you would think after the battle of Ai, after the loss at the battle of Ai, Joshua's immediate thought pattern would be: we need to go to God about this. We need to ask the Lord what his what his mind is on this, or better yet, just go with the plan of God initially. No, we're not making a league with nobody. I don't I don't care if you're from Ten Buck Two. We're not making a league with you. You're not our friends. You're not our allies. And, and, and if you serve us till the cows come home, it's not going to make a difference because God told us that all the peoples that we come across, we slam. Now, could they have gone to God? Could they have gone to God with it with, with, with an idea of making a leap? Sure, they, they could have. But I, I feel like the commandment of the Lord would have been exactly the same. Let's continue. Um, I've done lost my place. Where am I at? Verse 12. Uh, for uh, this, our bread, we took a hot for our provision out of our houses on the day we came forth to go unto you. Now, and behold, it is dry and it is moldy. Again, furthering the disguises. We live, look at this bread. Look at this moldy, dry, disgusting bread. This piece of bread, this loaf of bread came out of my wife's oven seconds before we left. And look how old it is. I mean, a convincing disguise. These people that are going to come into our lives and try to and try to lessen our guard, the guise is going to be so so convincing, and a lot of time we will try to convince ourselves. See, see that uh, the, the thing about the about disguises is how, how what is your suspension of disbelief? We can say, "Oh, I'm doing X, Y, and Z for the Lord." 
and convince ourselves of that. Oh, it's hot. It came right out of the oven. It came hot right out of the oven. And look how moldy and stuff it is now. And we can convince ourselves that what we're that that the the fallacy that we're involving ourselves is is the truth. I, I you know I I I I did that because because uh, well the, the the Lord was leading me that way. And we can convince ourselves, and it's all up to your suspension of your disbelief or your desire to believe in what you're saying. And if we lie to ourselves long enough, we can believe it. Uh, uh, men and women and ch- and children of, of both genders have been doing that for thousands of years. Just just you know, lie to yourself until you start believing it. You know, kind of like that we live in a free country. Just keep just keep lying to yourself. <laughs> uh, you know, and, and eventually you'll believe it. Um, and these bottles of wine which we filled were new, and behold, they be rent. And these our garments and our shoes were become very old by reason of, uh, of the very long journey. And the men and the men took of their victuals and and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. So, this is the thing, and this is this is the point I was just I was just getting across. What's your suspension of disbelief? What are you willing to compromise on? What are you willing to believe and say that this is this is not the hill that I wish to die upon? He said, And the men took of their victuals and asked not counsel at the mouth of the Lord. Now we know what the commandment of the Lord was, but what... God has uh, God has a plan. God ha- and and I th- I think there's the pr- permissive and 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 you know the the perfect will of God and all that stuff. But it has not been untold in Scripture for God to change His mind. In fact, one of the very first times that happens, if you look at the very in the book of Genesis, it ain't it ain't many chapters in. It may be five, six, something like that. It says I repented that He made men upon the earth. God was upset that he, they had gotten so bad, God was upset that he'd made them. Look at, look at Hezekiah. And the sickness that he was, go, he was going to die from. And he turned himself against the wall and he prayed to the Lord that he would, that he would grant him more life. And, Isaiah, and, he, and the Lord spoke to Isaiah and said, go turn again, tell him that he's going to be granted a little bit more life. He, he has appealed to me. God changed his mind there. God, God has got, and I'm not going to try to, and I'm, I'm sure it goes somewhere in the permissive or perfect will of God. You, you can theologize it, but, but it, it's there. And I'm not going to try to theologize it. God can change his mind because you know what? He's God. If he wants to change his mind, he, he can do it. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to question the Almighty. And I think that maybe there was an opportunity for God to change his mind for these people, but nobody ever asked God anything. Nobody ever brought, again, we see, on the battlefield, on, on the on the campaign to take Canaan, Israel failing to involve God in the decision making. Again. We just had gotten past the Battle of Ai. We just reaffirmed the covenant and the law of God in Canaan, and immediately we forget. We go to Reston and we forget. And it came to pass at the end of three days after they had made a league with them that they heard that they were their neighbors and they dwelt among them. So three days later, they're wandering around, and isn't that old so and so? And that's how it always turns out with us too. We'll uh, we'll make leagues. We'll let down our guard with these people. Let's let's you know for for the sake of for the sake of argument, some of these. Uh, crazy emails that I've gotten for our pastor. Let's say that Dad was willing to go to uh, 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 you know one of these uh, we're, you know gathering for you know uh, uh, homosexual you know there's, there's it's all it's always homosexuals or, or you know the big love ends you know, we're all gonna we're all, we're all gonna uh, link up arms and and sway together and 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 sing some type of spiritual music and pretend that we're all on the same side. Um, Let's say that we let our guard down for that. Immediately, uh, I, and, and, and I feel like when it comes to making a league with a country, three days is just about immediately. It's about like turning around and realizing, oh, they're right there they are. 
Um, immediately, Brother Larry would find himself on enemy in enemy enemy territory. Not only is they're enemy territory, they're right beside you there. <laughs> They 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 they've moved in. They've infested like cockroaches. And getting rid of them is going to be a bigger problem than just saying, "Oh, actually, we're not in a league anymore." See, this is the problem when uh, with them making this covenant this way. They probably made a covenant before God. There probably wasn't a lot they could do to them. You, when we when we make these compromises, it's going to come back and bite us. When we when we make these decisions to um, we make these decisions to uh, let our guard down, to to take what what the plan of God is, what 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 the goal is, what the what 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 we have set out to do. We take that and we set it aside in favor of something else. And I'm not I'm not saying that plans don't change. We got to consult God. We got to consult the Word of God. And and. and we're not like Joshua and some of these people. We can't we can't speak one on one with him and, and and get an audible answer back. That's going to take prayer. That's going to take fasting. That's going to take the study of God's word, and then we can come back around to this problem again. But immediate compromise with no with no recourse or uh, or look into what our God might have, have to say, what our God might have to think about it. And I've heard a dozen people say, well, there's not an answer for every one of life's questions in the Bible. Every scenario that anybody has ever come across is covered right here. If you haven't found it, it's because you haven't looked. Temptate, which 80% of human problems is temptation, and temptation's covered multitude of times in, the, in, in this book. And, 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 and we see... That they realized, and the children of Israel journeyed and came into their cities on the third day, and now their cities were Gibeon, uh, Chephira, Bethroth, Beroth, and Kirjath, and Kirjath Jerim. And the children of Israel smote them not, because the princes of, of the congregation had sworn unto them by the Lord God of Israel, and all the congregation murmured against the princes. Now, ultimately, when we make these little decisions, this was a group decision, but the group wasn't the one getting the flack for it. If we decided that we wanted to go in and have like a special conference with, uh, they're not even a tab anymore, the Mosaic uh, Church, uh, now as they're now called. Uh, if we decided that we wanted to go in and have like a special conference in them, and Brother Junior and Sister Diane, they weren't really sure about it, but Brother Larry said it would probably be okay, and they show up the first night, and there's dance and music, and there's, you know, lights, and they're going all over the place, and, and man, my papa was like, Larry, what have you done? That's what this was. Everybody was involved in the decision making, but only one person was getting blamed for it, and that was the princes of Israel. See, they, they swear a covenant with these people, now they're bound to them. <laughs> and, and that's another, that's, I mean, I don't think anybody in here is interested in swearing covenants by the Lord God, but when you make that compromise, when you let your guard... See, this is the, this is the thing. When you start backpedaling, when you start allowing allowing stuff, it is very hard to regain that ground again. And I would say that's that's the lesson you can learn from this... From this, from this, uh, from this if you backpedal, if you make that compromise, you can't just turn around and say, actually, with you... You're the you're 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 somehow the exception to the rule, and now we're we're going to enforce this rule, even though that we've compromised on this rule, and 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 and, and flip flop back and forth on this thing. This is not how it works. It's not how it works at all. If you give up on something, you might as well give up on it because there's no there's no turning back. Right. We we let we let we let some of these things start coming filtering into the church. And where, where 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 do we draw the line? Oh well, actually, this is the line now. How easy will it be to fail that line? This is the line now. Well, how easy is it? How, and easier still is it going to be? Because once you start running, you're weak. And, and, and the devil's a lion. He's a, he's a predator. And predators like their prey to run because eventually they stop running. Did you know that mankind is actually one of the the Earth's most apex predator because our 
buttocks are the the gluteus maximus muscle is something that a lot of animals don't possess it actually gives us the ability to have extended runs for a long periods of time whereas animals they don't have they, they have muscles they have thigh muscles but they don't really have that and so they're good for sprints they'll get out ahead of us a man cannot outrun most animals over short distances but like these indians when they used to hunt the buffalo you know how they'd run a buffalo down buffalo are fast how they run up they just keep after them days and days and humankind we can keep going and the buffalo they can only they can only go and eventually they just wear them out and you get up right on top of them slam them with a spear and the devil's the exact same, same way he has the stamina where you do not you, you you can sprint and you can try to run away from him from a little while, but he's a roaring lion so he, walking about seeing who may devour, and he will devour you. He is after you. He's looking for these ingresses, and he will come to you and says that that even the devil, you know, the the same devil that walks about as a roaring lion seeking may, seeking who he may devour, is the same devil who can appear as an angel of light. So he's going to come to you in rags and, 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 and with moldy bread and say, look, this just come out of a hot oven and all this other stuff. And you're going to say, yeah, that sounds like a great idea. Let's just invite all this stuff in. And before long, a, 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 a lion is maw deep up in your stomach. And we turn around and go, well, how did this happen? It must be really Larry's fault. Must be. Jarrett must have allowed these people into our church. Yeah. Uh, can you believe the Facebook post? That, that, you know, uh, it's always it's always something. Let's let's, let's continue. Um, uh, but all the uh, princes, uh, but all the princes said unto the, all the congregation, "We have sworn unto them by the Lord. Now, therefore, we may not touch them. This will we do to them. Uh, we will let them live, lest uh, wrath be upon us, because of the oath which we swear unto them." And the princess said unto them, Let them live, let them be the hewers of wood and drawers of water unto all the congregation, as the princess had promised them. And Joshua called for them and spake unto them, saying, uh, Wherefore have you beguiled us, saying, uh, We are very far from you, from you when ye dwell among us. Now Joshua, I believe, is a little high and mighty here. He, come, he gets them up and says, How dare you lie to us? That's a little, that's a little arrogant, Joshua. I've generally been on Joshua's side through most of his trials and tribulations in this book so far, but on this one, I've got to say, you didn't ask God. I bet God would have told you they live right over that ridge over there, Joshua. Literally, your neighbor. They're, they're, they're right over there. In fact, there's three cities worth of them right over this hill. And, and here Joshua says, how, how dare you lie to us? How dare you? Now therefore, you're cursed, and there shall none of you be freed from being bondmen, and hewers of wood, and draws water for the, for the house of my God. Now, these people would become basically a miniature tribe within Israel that would become servants to the house of God. That would be, uh, they would, they are, I mean, they call them the hewers of wood and the drawers of water, but they were, they were essentially the, the Levites' handymen. They would, they would do uh, what, and, um, uh, and, jo and they answered Joshua and said, Because it was certainly told thy servants how the Lord God hath commanded his servant Moses to give all the land and destroy all the inhabitants of the land from before you, uh, therefore we were sore afraid of our lives because you and have done this thing and now behold we are in thine hand as it seemeth good and right uh, unto thee to do uh, do unto us do and he, and he said unto them and delivered them out of the hand of the children of Israel and they slew them not and Joshua made them that day hewers of wood and drawers of water for the congregation and for the altar of the Lord even unto this day in the place which he should choose. Now this worked out remarkably better for Joshua and them than it would work out for us. Because we invite people in, and uh, what does the Bible say about a little leaven? It gets in the whole lump eventually. Um, Joshua and the people, the children of Israel, were in a unique situation where they, uh, they were an army. And, and, and I don't think this goes without some type of consequence. They had compromised the word of the Lord for an easy, what, what they assumed was 
something that was inconsequential. And that's generally where we let down our guard. Right. It's okay to do this. It's okay to do that. And, 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 and as I say this and that, you can your mind immediately jumps to a handful of things. I know it does because mine does too. It's okay to let the guard down on these things because it's being presented as, oh, those are far off. Those are far off problems. We're sometimes we're serving serving the Lord, and I, I've I've done this, you know, I, uh, in 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 working on some of these places of remodel. That's, that's tomorrow's problem. I I I ain't gonna I ain't gonna dig into X Y or Z because if it ain't broke, don't fix it. It's tomorrow's problem. It's it, it we'll, we'll get to it down the road, and that's how Joshua and the children of Israel handled this situation. But when it comes to things, you, know, you can do that on an old house, and it will come home to haunt you eventually. That stuff does come home to roost. But when it comes to spiritual things, we have to do it just like Barney Fife. What did Barney Fife always say? Nip it. Nip it right in the bud. That ain't Bible, but that's the way that we need to handle it. That's the way that we need to that we need to approach it when these people and we need to be on watch. We need and, and more than men on watch, we need to be in tune with God because I, 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 spiritual discernment is not is not something that you just, that you just pick up and you just roll with. Some I, I think some people are, are more attuned to God than others and have a natural ability to discern better than others. But and there are times I've run across people and, and situations and you can just feel it. You know something's not right. Even if you can't lay your finger on it, and if you pray about it long enough, you can not only can you lay your finger on it, you could throw a dart across the room and hit the bullseye dead on. We need to be careful who we allow, what we allow, where we allow, and when we see something on the horizon that we're not sure about, let's check it out. Let's make sure that we know what we're doing because we have a we have an very important duty here. We're, uh, there are a lot of children going here right now. There are a lot. There are a lot of lost people going to our church right now, and allowing these things in will affect them in, in a tremendous way. Are there any questions or comments on Joshua chapter nine before we dismiss? Larry. Yeah. Okay. Slice. Um. Yeah. The. Um, I think being and he wasn't a young man, but I think being a young leader, an inexperienced leader of the children of Israel, led to a lot of Joshua's problems. He wasn't quick on the decision making. Uh, it's just like the AI situation. What was his first reaction? Not to go to the Lord about it, but to wallow on the floor in the in the tabernacle about it. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah get thee up. They're sitting in the camp. You know why this is happening. When we see these things on the horizon, we know most of the time what they are before they ever show up. It's just like those those emails we got. I know what they are way before, without even having to go with them. When I, I when I can read the first line of text and I'm getting red flag warnings from the Lord, that isn't something I brush off and say, you know what, Dad and Jarrett might enjoy going and talking to some of these other people. Let's just send them down there. Just see how they do. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Are you, they're having sausage links. They like sausage links. Anybody else? All right. Well, be good. Be a blessing this week. Be a light.